Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to make this cute little Christmas tree icon and I know it might seem a little bit early for Christmas but it's four weeks away already and with the seasonal content I always try to make it beforehand so you get your chance to go through the tutorial and then later get creative with the stuff you learn and I will actually show you how you can render this out with the transparent background and with some shadow and use it in a 2D composite like on a web or a banner um, I will do this in Figma and I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do please don't forget to leave the like it will really help my channel and if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see tutorials like this in the future please hit that subscribe and additionally bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new and if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Let's now jump right into empty blender file and first of all I will just delete everything so let's drag a selection, press X and delete and now I'll press 1 for front view and I want to do the tree not larger um, than 2 meters right about here um, so we have some frame for our icon so in case you decide to make some more icons you can reference this size and have them all consistent so let's press shift A and we'll add a circle and first of all, I will modify the vertices to 12 because we'll use subdivision surface, so we don't need that high of a resolution. And now tap into the edit mode and press S to scale it down like this. And we can press F that will fill our circle with the face. So we can just press E and start extruding. And let's do something like this here. And now you can just press Shift D, right click to release in place and S to scale. We have a new face in place there and we can just scale it out. Let's go back to the front view by pressing 1 on an numpad and let's scale it up a little bit more. And now I'll press E to extrude and just scale this down. And we'll do this several times. So again, I'll press Shift D, right click to release and S to scale this up and E to extrude. Now scale this down. And once more, Shift D, right click, S to scale and E to extrude let's make this smaller okay and of course we can now refine the shape so you can press a to select all press s and then shift z to lock it on x and y axis to make it a little bit wider and of course we can hold period on a keyboard switch to 3d cursor and scale this up on z axis as well so we have something like this here okay now basically this is the shape we'll be working with and let's make it nice and smooth so I will tap out and go to the modifiers panel and add a bevel modifier first and increase the segments to two that will help with some of these supporting edges so we don't need to add any more loops into mesh itself this will help us with our subdivision modifier which we can add right now just like this and now just right click and shade smooth so this is already looking much better but I want to make these shapes a little bit more rounded. So let's tap into the edit mode. I will go for face select by pressing three and just select these faces by holding shift and now press I to inset and we'll press G then Z and move this down. And now let's go back to the front view by pressing one on an unpad and I will enable X-ray here and just shift some of these around to refine the shape to my liking. But all in all, I really like this. So now let's go back to the edit mode. I will deselect everything by clicking away and just hover here, press L to select the whole part here, the linked mesh. Make sure to hold period on a keyboard to go back to the medium point and press R to rotate this slightly. We will ever so slightly stylize this. Okay, just like that and the base shape of the tree is ready so now let's add some decoration i'll press shift a and let's add some star um, there is an add-on available by default in blender if you go to the edit preferences and add-ons you can just search for extra objects and it will enable all of these options for you right here and then you can go to extras and build a simple star and now we can just press g then z and drag it up right here 
tab into the edit mode and press S to scale it down. Now press 7 on an ampad to look from the top and I want to rotate this 90 degrees so this side is on the bottom here. So let's press R then 90 and confirm with enter. And now we can press R, X and 90 degrees to rotate this 90 degrees. And now we can tab out, look from the front and press G then Z and move this up just like that. Now let's go back into the edit mode and let's enable the auto merge right here. And let's switch to the edge select by pressing 2, alt click this outer loop and press G twice and slide it back so it merges in the back there. And now we can fix the shape a little bit. So let's go to a side view by pressing 3 on an numpad, press A to select all, press G then Y and move it here. So we have it on the origin point there. And now we can add that bevel modifier, reduce the amount. So we have something like this in place and let's press Ctrl 2 on a keyboard to add that subdivision modifier and shade this smooth. So we have a nice star decoration. And I think with the star, the tree is too high. So let's select the tree, press S, then Z and scale it down like this. So it's more compressed and chubby. And I'll press Ctrl A and apply that scale. And now just move this down. And the last step, I want to add some balls. So let's press Shift A and we'll add a round cube. And this is again part of the extra objects. So let's switch the preset to quad sphere and reduce the divisions to something like four. That should be enough. And now let's press tab to go into the edit mode, press S and scale it down. And we'll press G then Z and move it up. So it sits on the origin point. And now if we tab out and activate the face project and project individual elements and rotation for snapping, we can now just press G and hold control to snap this around R3 and don't forget to right click and shade this smooth. So now it's only about distributing these decorations so it looks nice from this angle. So let's move some of them around and I'm always just pressing Alt D to duplicate and then holding Ctrl to snap it. Of course you can enable snapping by default so you don't need to hold Ctrl but I like to have the additional control and snap only when I really want to. So let's just move it around and snap some of these. Maybe this can go even towards the back. And let's try to find some configuration that looks fine. Okay, I think this is okay, um, but just for the sake that this is basically a 3D object, let's duplicate some in the back as well in case this gets exported you know to other software or you need another angle it always it's always great to have that fail safe so now um, these are popping out too much so we can just tap into the edit mode press g and z twice to push them closer to the surface like that and basically that's our three model. So we can now tab out and set up some camera. So let's press shift A and let's add a camera from a front view and the camera will be added aligned with our front view. So we can now just press G then Y and move it back and G then Z to move it slightly up. And let's go to the output settings and switch resolution to something like 1200 to 1200. I want the square icon. And now if we hit zero on an unpad, we go to the camera view and we can now press G then Z twice to move it closer or G then Z to move it up and down. And if you don't like the perspective distortion, um, you might need to go into the camera settings and change the focal length to something like 80, for example, and then push it more outside that will reduce the distortion. So basically depends how present you want the lens effect to be. And now we'll simply go ahead and render this out. So first of all, let's go to the render settings and let's switch to cycles. I will enable GPU and some denoising and reduce samples to 512. And now I will hold Ctrl B to limit the rendering only for our camera viewport. And now if you hold Z and then go for rendered, you will have your cycles preview. And the speed of this preview really depends on your GPU. And now let's press Shift A and we'll choose some light and I will go for area light here, press G then Z and move it up like this and let's go for something stronger. So in the light settings, let's switch this to something like 150 
and additionally we can press G then Y and move it towards the front a little bit so we get less of these shadows there. And to make the fall off a little bit softer we can switch from square to disc. And now to make this a little bit more interesting in terms of lighting we can add some rim light. So let's press Shift A and we'll add a spotlight this time. Press G then Z, move this up and we'll switch to the cursor as a pivot point again. So hold period on a keyboard and switch to 3D cursor. And now we can rotate this a little bit and now press R, X and 90 degrees and let's hit minus. So we go to the opposite direction. Let's confirm with enter. And we can now make the spot size a little bit smaller and press G then Z and move this up. So you can see how we are hitting um, the tree here, but the light isn't visible because we really need to add some power to the spotlight. So let's enter something like 2000 and you can see the effect right here. We can go even 3000 for example and now try to rotate this a little bit like that and move it slightly back and now if you look from the front or from the camera you can see that rim appearing here on the side and this is really something that helps you define your shape and will separate it from the background so let's leave it like this for a second and let's select the tree and let's add some materials so first i will create something um, green like this and add some roughness and maybe not so saturated something like that and now let's create a new material slot new material and we'll add some brown to the trunk so let's increase the roughness all the way to one tap into the edit mode and we can just click away to the select and hovering over the trunk we can press L and click assign tap out and there will be our trunk and now select the sphere and let's add a new material and I want to add some red color here and let's make it metallic so we get this nice brushed metal effect and same for the star only we want to make this yellow or gold like this so this is our base lighting setup and now you can see how the rim light really helps to sell the shape if you hide it away you can see this falls quite flat even though we have some light creating the shadows over the object but adding that rim light really brings out the plasticity of the shape and now we can play with the world settings and introduce some more color right there to actually bring some more color onto the object and into the shadows you can see how they get painted but I think um, the background is a little bit distracting so let's go to the render settings and in the film section let's enable transparent and that will get rid of the background and now we can really see the effect of the world color on our object if you go really strong you can see how these shadows get filled and i really like this so far so let's try and render this out i will press shift a and add a plane right here and make it larger but the purpose of this plane will be just to catch the shadows and i want to disable the shadow the really strong one from the spotlight so let's select the spotlight and I will just go ahead and disable cast shadows. And now select the plane and we'll go into the object properties, visibility and enable shadow catcher. That will basically make it transparent and only render the shadows that are cast onto it. So now if you go to the rendering mode and press F12, you should get your tree render with the shadow at the bottom. So just go ahead, press Alt S and save your tree but to actually use this with the shadow in 2d environment there is a little trick i always do um, let's go back to the layout view and with the plane still selected go here and disable the rendering and let's make another one this time without the plane so there is no shadow there and just save this next to the one you made and i will see you in figma so right here in figma i have my two rendered images one is with the shadow and one is without and i just want to move this one on top of it and change their ordering as well so the one without the shadow is on top now i will select both of them and press ctrl g to group them so i can move them at once and just move them over my design um, this is just some random christmas wish generated by ai prompt so i will just scale this down and place it over and you can see how you can easily place your transparent renders over your 2d designs um, but the shadow is quite strong 
And the reason why I'm using both of those images is that now I can select this one with the shadow and just change its opacity here to something like 25% and I have these nice soft shadows. So for example here, maybe it can work when I set it to something stronger, like 50%, um, but let's say I would change this background to something really bright and now the shadow kinds of breaks the design. So I can go ahead and make this really subtle, like 20% or something. So this is why I do it always like this. Um, so I have a full control over these shadows when I place my transparent renders um, into the images. So that's it for today's tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you did, please don't forget to leave the like. And if you're new around here, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.